ever wonder what in the world to share in your stories on Instagram? Honestly, stories have always come easy for me, but I've been posting them since their inception about six years ago. But with all the changes on Instagram and focus largely on reels, followers and clients wonder how to fit in stories and are they even worth it? Spoiler alert, they are worth it. (laughs) Today's clip from a mentorship Zoom training has member Suzanne Joffrey on asking how to best target stories and what to share. Stories, my friend, are where the DMs come into play. And why are DMs important? Well, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll share more about that later on. But for now, just know that you shouldn't go blasting people in the DM. Don't mass message people. Send them blanket copies of your posts and your product and all of that. That's not what DMs are about. So just know we're not talking about that. No one ever responds to DM blasts. In fact, I've set filters for that in my own settings because I get them too. Ain't nobody got time for that. Am I right or am I right? Or am I right? So what exactly should you share in stories? Listen in. Welcome to Authentic Online Marketing with Ruthie Gray. Growing awareness for your blog, podcast, book, or product involves more than dancing to reels and yelling, buy my thing. This show models quality over clamor so you can put your spin on your message and market in a way that feels authentic to you because nobody wants to sound like an infomercial. And now, here's your host, Ruthie Gray. Who else has a question? Comment. I guess I have a little bit of deals with stories. First of all, I guess how many you know, or it's kind of a good number to post per day. And is that more of like your personal life and, you know, that kind of thing? Or is it more business? And, you know, tell me, talk about that. Okay. So stories can be both, but I think you should always, always include some of your personal life in your stories. That is where people really get to know you. That's like the behind the scenes. That's like the juicy tidbits. People are nosy. They want to know about the person behind the account. So I just took off a week and that was just in the newsletter I sent out. You guys should have it. And there is one thing I did do during that time and it was share stories and it wasn't anything big. It was just snapshots of my mom who was here with me, my daughter, things that we did, the ocean, whatever. And I didn't say a whole lot. I didn't have a whole lot of text, but I have invested story watchers. Many creepers, but not 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 weirdos. That's not what I mean. I just mean there are a lot of people who just, they're interested and they're interested for two reasons. One, they want to know how I do my business and balance life. And number two, they're waiting to see if I'm going to give some Instagram tidbits, which I also do. And so I try to drip those out every once in a while so that people are like, oh, I got to keep watching her stories because I meant I might miss something. So when something comes out that's a that's brand new, a lot of times I'll I will screenshot it and share in stories so that people know and say, hey, you saw it here in my story. And every once in a while, I will say, use that as a call to action in my post, in my feed post or my reel. Watch my stories for more. Watch stories for behind the scenes, whatever. So for me, some people overthink stories. I don't overthink stories. I just do stories. I just do them. Whatever is natural. If I realize I haven't done a story in a while, I'll take a picture of my desk, you know, and then I'll label stuff or I'll just, or it's just a picture, you know. But one thing you want to do for the most part is to try to get your audience to interact with you in stories. Because the more engaged they are, the more Instagram pushes your stories out to people. So just do a poll like I'm doing my hair. I'm letting my hair go on natural today. Do you have curly hair or straight? Curly, straight. That's a poll. Slap it up there. The end. You know, stuff like that. Because 
when you start out with those polls, then eventually they they lead to conversations because you will hit pain points. Does that help? Mm-hmm. That's a lot. <laughs> a lot of words. You always uh, send your posts to your stories. I always do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I do. I okay. always do that. And then sometimes I'll expand on it. I usually expand on it. And at least once a week, I'll go off on a rant in stories and I'll talk about something. But it's usually something that I know people need to know or they, they're they wondering about. And I always hit the captions sticker so that they can read too, because not everybody watches stories with the sound on. Right. Okay. So that is a, a sticker? A, yes. It's a, it says captions and it will translate for you. Thank you. You're welcome. What should you be sharing in stories? Short answer, don't overthink it. Use stories to share your life behind the scenes and more importantly, just start. I have several reels that share simple practices to boost story watchers. So check out our show notes for those links. Your biggest fans watch your stories. These are the followers that make up your real community. These are the people you have DMs with, conversations that often times lead to conversions. In fact, almost every client has conversed with me first in stories. But those conversations began on neutral ground because I shared my life behind the scenes and tips. Speaking of tips, here's a huge one for getting people to watch your stories. Leave that as a call to action in your feed post or reel. Tell them to watch your stories for more. Easy peasy, right? Stories are my very favorite form of communication on Instagram of all the modes it provides. Use this important tool to forge your own community and see what happens. And as always, be sure to share your unique message your way in your own authentic voice.